The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now, we welcome once again to our daily doctrinal Bible study through the YouTube of the Vic Balbidu Evangelistic Ministry. So, welcome to you, uh, our subscribers, friends, relatives, and followers, especially our fellow believers. Okay, without much ado, following our customary procedure, the next few moments are devoted to silent prayer in order that we might be properly prepared to concentrate on the teaching of the Word of God. Therefore, let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, because we belong to Thee, we have the right and the privilege of fulfilling the function of our priesthood by listening to the teaching of Your Word. We recognize, Father, that our growth, our orientation to life, our understanding of Your plan, Your purpose, Your design for each one of us is based upon the constant, daily, consistent persistent assimilation of your word. May God the Holy Spirit now sanctify us to the nourishment of our soul, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, we continue our uh, discussion on our topic, the problems in life. Now yesterday, oh by the way, we are going to finish this off today as uh, we have <coughs> limited time in our uh, series of this particular study. Okay, open your Bibles once again to Galatians 5.25. It says, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, meaning the desires of the old sin nature. When a believer walks, that's modus vivendi, he should walk in cadence with the Holy Spirit's perfect timing. And that is how to be a winner believer. Once a believer achieves the spiritual adulthood stage, he becomes an invisible hero. And definitely, he is on good timing. Why? The answer is because he is now in cadence with God's timing. Therefore, what is important here is to emphasize repetition and inculcation of Bible doctrine so we can synchronize automatically with God's perfect timing. You see, Bible, or without Bible doctrine, I mean, it is definitely a life of bad timing on the part of the believer. Unbelievers call this a lock. Now, <laughs> believers are not supposed to believe in luck, but in grace. So, what a believer lacks in life is Bible doctrine when he makes a decision. Always remember the personal sense of destiny for you, believer. But unfortunately, we will not be able to make this personal sense of destiny a reality in our spiritual life if we're not growing and advancing in our spiritual life. Also remember grace orientation. You see, our measurement or basis 
in our grace orientation is God and His Word. In fact, it is our personal relationship with God that is the very basis of our grace orientation. Remember the principle, the way up is the way down, meaning God promotes the humble but demotes the proud. Bad timing is the result of bad decisions. Bad decisions are caused by ignorance of Bible doctrine. Although God permits you to do these things, still, you are the only one responsible, accountable, and answerable for those decisions. All these are done out of sync with God's perfect timing. They are all bad timing. That is why timing is always a problem in life. You see, Everything in life is based on timing, like the uh, rising and setting of the sun and the moon, operation of machines, in driving a car, operating uh, or operation of wristwatches, etc., etc., etc. You know what? Life has to be in sync with God's timing although God's timing is seen through His divine decrees, His perfect protocol plan through His Word. Did you notice the Bible says God's 1,000 years is one day for Him, and His one day is 1,000 years? That's in 2 Peter 3, 8, or 3, 8. This means God does not need timing in the literal sense. In Ecclesiastes, God's word says there is always a time for everything in life. This means your life can be perfectly in sync with God's timing. Ecclesiastes 3.1 says there is always a time for everything in life. God is telling us to learn His timing so we can be in sync with it and how do we learn it? By studying, learning, believing, and applying the Word of God in our life. That's the only way to be in sync with God's timing. Did you hear that right? In verse 2 of the same chapter, there's a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot. Okay, an unbeliever can only be in sync with God's timing by believing in Christ alone. That is the way to enter into God's perfect timing. The person who just believed in Christ is a born-again believer. Galatians 5.25, again, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Remember Ecclesiastes 3.2? It says there is a time to be born and a time to die. A believer's physical death is God's perfect timing. He determines the time, the manner, and the cause of a believer's death. In verse 2, there is a time to plant and a time to uproot. Today, there is such thing as ROI, return of investment, if you engage in business. That is true, to invest and a time to withdraw your investment. Nowadays, people synchronize their time to the so-called horoscope or feng shui, right? They believe in luck. Right? But if you are a believer, I think I have said this before, I'll say it again. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you are not supposed to believe in luck, but only to believe in what? In grace, which is God's policy. That is the big difference between a believer and an unbeliever. 
to end our topic, the problems in life, there are verses that I would like to give you for you to learn and apply in life. Here they are. Acts 16.31, Acts 4.12, John 3, 3 and 7, John 8.32, John 3.16, John 3.36, John 14.6, Matthew 7.13-14, Ephesians 2.8-9, 2 Peter 3.9, Hebrews 9.27 and 1 Corinthians 2.16 Here we end our discussion on the study of the problems in life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the wonderful privilege of examining these things together which are so important in our spiritual life. We thank you for teaching us the mechanics of which do really help us understand grace and we can desort all of the legalism out of grace so that by that separation we can advance with acceleration to the point of maturity for we glorify thee. May God the Holy Spirit then challenge us to persist in our study Thank you for this Bible study through the YouTube of the Vic Malbido Evangelistic Ministry. For we ask all this in Christ's name. Amen.